Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Design Sparkcast The Expert. As you can see, we're out live, we're on the road, we're here at RS Connect, and I'm gonna be talking to Nick Hartley from SICK. We're gonna be talking about energy monitoring, but specifically for compressed air systems. Nick, would you like to give an introduction to Design Spark? Thank you, Greg. Hi, my name is Nick Hartley. I'm a product manager at SICK. My areas of responsibility include laser distance measurement sensors. I'm also responsible for our level, pressure, temperature and flow equipment. One of the products um, we're talking about today is the FTMG. So Nick, we're talking about energy costs, but specifically for companies. Um, if we think of the ISO standard 50001, what is that actually telling us and what, what do we need to consider with that? Okay, so the ISO 50001 is an accreditation. It forms part of an energy management system which a customer would be looking to work towards. Now that can include a number of different commodities such as the, the lighting in the factory, uh, electricity usage, uh, even water supplies, yeah. um, but also specifically about compressed air, which is one of the biggest consumable uh, energies within, within a factory. Yeah, so I was actually reading up on compressed air, compressed air systems, and basically what I was reading was, was quite surprising that up to 30% of energy can be lost through leakage when it comes to compressed air. Now we know that compressed air as a commodity is very expensive, but if we're looking at uh, an installation, is that common that you can have up to 30%, but also where will these leakages appear? Okay, 30% well, is a, a value that the Carbon Trust has um, looked at uh, surveys within different factories and organizations and that can be made up of different types of losses it can be overconsumption. it can be under consumption yeah. there can be leakages uh, throughout the system uh, throughout the whole compressed air system within a factory so it's more about what the customer can hear when he's lo when those losses are, are occurring but also what they can't hear yeah. is, is really what we're trying to try to yeah. identify and I, I think that's 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 quite a, a good um Kind of analogy there if you can hear it it's costing you money if you can't hear it it's still costing you money but you might not appreciate that you Absolutely. have a leak yeah so, 100%. yeah so what i want to talk about with the um the ftmg is essentially this is a precision measurement tool for compressed air but it's more than just a measurement tool right yeah i mean the, the whole nucleus of understanding where compressed air losses occur you need a sensor you need to understand where those losses are within the factory. The sensor is strategically placed around the factory. Yeah. It's a real-time data source of information. So the sensor is actually a permanent installation okay. and it can give you lots of different variables, not just how much gas is being consumed, but there's a number of other monitoring variables that the sensor can provide. Absolutely, so in terms of that kind of data, what is it that it can tell the user? You know, for example, okay, we know maybe how much um, flow there is of the compressed gas, but what is it else that it can tell us outside of that? Well, the, you need to understand what those variables um, mean and what the benefit is for the customer. You know, the advantage of having a permanent installation is that the dynamics of compressed air are always changing. So volumetric flow rate is important. The sensor can measure temperature. It can also measure pressure within the system, yeah. which is really important to maintain pressure throughout compressed air uh, usages. Um, but really, one of its most unique uh, points is that it's actually a sensor that can measure cons the consumption. So it can measure within kilowatts hour. Some uh, companies may have to uh, do that calculation in the PLC, but this sensor does it directly from, from the sensor itself. Fantastic. So you can actually get a proper unit cost metric against it just by using this sensor data itself? Yeah. So if we understand what the consumable items are on the factory floor, we understand what the, the actual uh, tariff is of the customer, we can then, using the algorithms within the sensor, make a calculation based on that usage. But it's all about when the question comes, return on investment. Okay. How do we do that? Unfortunately, you can't immediately give that, val that answer with a value. Uh, we need to understand what the, um, what the history and usage is so that we can then under understand more about how those losses are occurring. Yeah, and I think that's a valid point is when people are talking about um, the ROI when they buy a product and they instigate it within their, their facility, the unit cost is like, okay, what's, what's it going to save me in the long run? But 
you know, think back to the, what we were talking about earlier, up to 30% loss. That's costing you money right now. Installing one of these will actually help monitor that, but also, like we said, the stuff that you, you couldn't hear. But in terms of interrogating the data, you know, data is, is power in this connected age. So what is it you can show us with the data that this can actually bring yeah. on board? So not only obviously the, the sensor does the measurement and it monitors, and you need to have these sensors strategically placed around the factory to identify and understand where those losses are. But how do we understand that data? How do we transfer the data? Yeah. We want to aggregate that data. We need to make it more visible and transparent to the customer. So we use different types of uh, software platforms. So one of those uh, software platforms uh, is our monitoring box software. And we use this in conjunction with the FTMG. It's, it enables us to look at all the those different variables we're talking about. So for example, mass flow rates, you know, the temperature, the pressure, also the consumption of the gas itself. Um, so the data is then aggregated and it can be visualized by the customer. We can then set some thresholds so that the customers can be more aware about, about where those losses are occurring. So we can set those alarm functions for a customer. They can be then uh, indicated by a, on a mobile phone, for example. That gives the customer some real-time data and information there and then instantaneously. The thing about compressed air as well in those systems is the dynamics of the compressed air system are changing all the time. So where customers may have a uh, report from somebody coming in and giving that information on the day, unfortunately the validity of that information becomes invalid because that compressed air system could change within minutes. A valve may not be closing correctly, there could be a porous uh, hose there could be a, a leakage which they can't see or hear. So by having this sensor in place with this type of software and this data, the customer is then instantaneously seeing those changes within the system. Yeah, uh, that's a good point to, to call out is what you're now seeing is the trend. So you can see the trend, you can see those variables that are changing. If there's a change, there could be an issue. But at that instantaneous moment in time, it's just basically an audit of what's gone on that's that moment in time, not reference to anything else, but with this you're talking about that kind of um, rate of change and you can monitor things for that. Absolutely, and, and those changes can occur at any point, any time. It can be when a, a machine is left on, when it's not in use, and how else would they understand and know that that was happening? So that data is then immediately visible and becomes much more accessible. It also aligns it with the customer's uh, objectives within the factory. They may need to reduce their um, over usage by a certain percentage. Yeah. These are the tools and this is the inf this systems that are required to enable them to meet those objectives. We talk about um, overall equipment efficiency, the OEEs that are required, and customers are, now, are very much switched on about this now, yeah. looking at the sustainability and the productivity improvements within the factory. There's some really interesting points there. Um, I guess you know if you're a facilities manager, you're looking for increased productivity, you're looking for lower cost. What is it we're actually looking at within these dashboards if you could just take us through some of the kind of performance measures? So at the moment we look at it more from a holistic position. Um, we have various different assembly lines. We're actually using um, a, a Hopdorf, which is a smart sick factory over in Germany in the, in the uh, Black Forest. So we're looking at live data now, are we? Yeah, this is real time running data as we speak right, now. Okay. So we can look at those assembly lines and within those assembly lines we'll assign assets. Those assets are the sensors, so in this case the FTMG. So what we do is we can pick one of those uh, assembly lines. Here you can see an aggregation of all the assembly lines at the moment. We take one of those sensors, look at the assembly line, we can see that there's three sensors actually okay. um, working at the moment. Two are actually uh, not, not in, in, in action. We take the one that is producing some data and then we go into a more granulated um, insight into what those variables are showing. So for example, is the pressure constant and, and moving quite quite regularly, you can see there's a little spike there. Yeah. Um, that may be a demand by one of the consumable items. We can also look at downtime indication. 
So this gives a more analytical insight into, by percentage, how much consumable compressed air they're using yeah. over time. We can then look at it in a more graphical representation. So here you can see the volume, the mass. Yeah. One, one thing we're obviously interested in is the linear output of, of consumption of energy yeah. that's being used in the factory. And if we wanted to actually drill a little bit further down into maybe this particular drop yeah. in the mass flow rate, we can, we can zoom in. That will give us a much more in-depth, precise yeah. uh, look at what the activities was on that baseline yeah. over that time period. So we, we can go into yeah. a much more granular level. Yeah. Is it unexpected or is it expected? I guess also with, with this as well, when you were talking about certain parameters, the users themselves can figure their limits, you know, to raise uh, maybe work tickets, for example. Correct, yeah? Absolutely. You know, these are the, the indicators. These are the key indicators yeah. for the process that's running. What's the demand on the shop floor? If there's something that's different, that's not working quite right, you can immediately identify where that was yeah. on, the time, on the timeline and on the baseline of the, uh, of the process yeah. of operation. Now, I, I would imagine within industry, you've, you've probably got a couple of lines which are exactly the same. Yeah. And you may have one of these fitted within each of those lines. Quite quickly, from a graphical representation here, you could see if there's any kind of inefficiency or something untoward within one of those lines just looking at the, the data very quickly. Comparative data is really important, you know, to have that ability to look at the two lines simultaneously. I mean, we're not trying to push customers into a position to say, okay, you must have a sensor on every single pipeline. What we're looking at is where strategically we know the consumable energy is being used where we can clearly see and identify where those changes are occurring. Yeah, it's fantastic just to think back that, you know, we've got some compressed gas going through here and we're getting this amount of data and those facility managers, those plant managers are actually taking that data and making real savings into their business. Like we said at the beginning, compressed air is very expensive, but losing compressed air, that's just money which is, is gone back into the environment. Really. Absolutely, you know, compressors are, 20% um, inefficient, so you, anything that they can uh, recoup by way of, of revenue to save on money, because every time the compressor kicks in because it's, you're using compressed air, it's plugged into the electricity. <laughs> so you can imagine your electricity bill at these companies is getting higher and higher and higher every time. Absolutely. For unnecessary usage. Cool. Fantastic, Nick. Thanks for taking us through this. And for you guys at Design Spark. Check out the FTMG at RS. We'll put some links below the video. Obviously some links to SICK and I just want to thank Nick again for taking time out of his busy day at RS Connect to talk to us on DesignSpot. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Greg.